What's going on y'all? We are going to talk about aluminum storefront cheapy cylinders in this video. Why do I say cheapy cylinders? Because these cylinders are the cylinders that come with most new installations of narrow style doors, whether it be a mortise style lock with your typical Adams right deadbolt or a push bar. The cheapy cylinders are made out of a kind of a whatever pot metal style material. They wear out quicker. And we're going to talk about some of the issues that you're going to run into with these types of cylinders. So let's take a look at them. So again, most of the time you're going to find these styles of cylinders on aluminum narrow style glass frame with a glass in the middle, kind of like our front door in our shop. And this is the style of cylinder that will typically come on those doors. Funny enough, a lot of them still come double cylinder with keys on both sides. I, I still see doors that are just put in to this day with that. Now these typical, this is a Vista wall, which was a, a glass door make, maker, very popular. I think they still make them. Um, however, uh, a lot of the times I guess that costs money. So now most cylinders are just gonna come with this blank face with no name or anything on it. And uh, there is a big difference in kind of going back about a year, we started seeing a change in these cylinders. And the biggest change that I noticed straight away was the screw that holds this cylinder in. Now I'm gonna be zooming in and out of this video so that you can see a little bit closer. But if we take this screw out, I've already got one out over here. We can see these are fine thread machine screws. I don't even know, these are 440 or something. Three. 340, I don't know which size they are, but you can see they're machine screws. Uh, about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, I started seeing this more and more, and that is the screws coming with a coarse thread. They are almost like a little bitty sheet metal screw. So we have shifted from your fine thread screws to a coarse thread screw. Now we don't know this just... Where'd the other one go? I already lost one. I already lost one. Um, <laughs> I don't know the long-term effects of this. I will notate that I do have instances where these wallow out. I always recommend using a blue Loctite to hold those screws in, but most of the time I don't do it unless it's problematic. But on really heavy use ones, it's sometimes a good idea to use a light, the blue Loctite or even a purple Loctite. Definitely don't use red, um, but these can wallow out. Now, you know, we see it is, it's a, an obvious coarser thread. This is an aluminum-like material. I said pop metal. It is. I don't know whether that's a good change or a bad change. I don't know. What have you, what have you guys noticed? If, if y'all deal with a lot, let me know in the comments what y'all think. If y'all have noticed the new coarser threads coming off easier or not as easy but again it to me i hadn't seen them around very much except um in a uh, brand new stuff so the long-term effects of it we just don't know yet because they haven't been around long enough to know but i'm sure within the next few years i'll start seeing more and more so i'm going to go ahead and shim both of these both the older style vista wall and the newer style and we're going to talk about another little change in it so first we'll take apart this Vista wall cylinder and we look in there and we see a typical plug with all the chamber holes drilled individually. No big deal. Um, personally, these locks, I love and I hate these locks. I, I mostly love them because when I get called out to open a vacant storefront and it has this on there, bam, in. If it has a better quality cylinder, like, you know, even this LSDA, there's a lot tighter tolerances in the brass body cylinders than there is in here. And we can see that just floppy. Uh, the plug itself, let's see, here's one. It's got a lot of give in the plug itself. So what that does is that leads to quicker wear. Almost always, after a few years of use, the holes... Where'd my plug go? Wow, I lost my plug. I don't know what's wrong with me today, y'all. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, 
because of this, what I call crap metal or softer metal, the plug holes will oblong quicker. And because of that give in the plug, the key going in and out and in and out causes it to be worn down more. And uh, this is what a lot are coming out. Now, this change that I'm about to show you is not actually, it was not actually changed with the screw change, this style cylinder, and you may have seen this in other cheap locks, is it's split all the way down. I've never figured out the machining background or why that is that is done. Maybe it's easier to do that for broaching. I don't know. But if we look really close at it, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in again. We can see there is slits down the middle as compared to... Let's dump those pins out. Dump those. Get out of there. Compared to solid holes. Now... You may think the pins are going to wobble, and actually, this is a brand new cylinder, and those pin holes are not round. It looks oval from right here. Um, so what happens is that the, the, the give and the plug and the cheap metal, the continual motion in and out causes these to fail a lot. However, one thing I do want to talk about is if you have to master key these, People are like, what? I'm going to go ahead and throw a picture up of some that I did. So I just had a customer with 35, 40 altogether of these things, and they wanted a master key. They, you, you can't convince somebody when they have working cylinders. Sometimes you just cannot convince somebody that they need better cylinders, right? So you just do, as a locksmith company, you do what you have to do. Well, unfortunately, I had to master key these. So if we put oh, if we put pins in, um, you can drop pins in as usual, like any other cylinder. You know, I'll say whatever whatever key this is, as long as you put your pins in correctly. <laughs> um, so there we go. And let's say we had to stack some master wafers in there. If you go and you grab a master wafer, anything under about 57 will go between we'll go up here and get a 40 what is this 48 so this is 48 what happens is you go and you drop it oops you drop it in hopefully i'm zoomed in okay you see how that just rolled look at that and what happens is it'll actually roll when you're trying to pin the lock you try to put it in there this may not be a good example because i've got some really tall pins in this one oops um, basically it'll get wedged between the two, between the, the slot. And that happens with anything from 48 or below. And of course with Schlage, that is a three step. You got to use a 45 pin for a three step. And look at that. It just rolled all the way across. I don't know if I can stop and start that, but, or slow motion, but it uh, just rolls all the way across. And another thing is typically if I'm in a hurry and I'm doing a big master key job, I'll grab, you know, this the kit. The holes are big enough for me to just grab a wafer and drop it in there. So what I do is I grab this wafer and I'll put it in there. Okay, that one didn't do what I wanted it to do. Let's try this one. All right. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to zoom in here. I don't know if I'm already zoomed in or not. You see how it just kind of wedged right there and it didn't fall flat? That was because these dang cylinders they're horrible you can do the same thing with this Let's push those down grab your pen drop it in there and push it and it drops flat right not so much with these we'll start on 39 here um, on this last pan we'll put it in now that one fell okay let's do another 39 up at the front all right, okay, so I just dropped it in. I'm in a hurry, and I'm like, ah, dang it. So now i got to come, and i got to get either tweezers or dump it, and, uh, and then it'll wedge. Like right here, it looks flat, but it's actually not. If we take a key and put it in, it sometimes it'll actually jam so hard in there that you do this, and it pops all your pins off, and then, ah, there we go. You know, there goes your master keying for those chambers. It's really frustrating. You know, but it is what it is. It's just something you have to learn to deal with. So how I deal with these is I'll grab the pen with my tweezers. And, you know, I just, like I said, did like 35 to 40 cylinders. I come in and I drop it straight in. Just instead of trying to angle it and just drop it in. 
they're still problematic. I still recommend you switch it out with a better quality cylinder. But again, if you have a customer with 50 cylinders and they've all been working fine up until the locksmith comes along and says, oh no, these aren't going to work. That's not a real good, I guess, look or whatever, because to the customer, hey, these have been working for five years. I called this dude and I wanted them rekeyed. And then all of a sudden this guy's wanting to charge me, you know, 20, 30 bucks per cylinder to supposedly upgrade and, and they work just like my other ones did. It, you know, it's just hard to convince customers sometimes to upgrade. So it's just one of those is what it is. But of course, you have a lot tighter tolerances. You have better metal that will last longer with use. Some customers, if you have a good relationship with the customer, you, you just explain to them, hey, you just moved into this building. It's brand new. These are crap cylinders. I can guarantee you I'll be back out in a year to fix the problem. A lot of times you can convince them to go ahead and replace the cylinder, which of course is the best. But really the main point of the video, the biggest change is these screws. I don't know, nobody knows how long they're gonna last. Now quickly, we're gonna go over to the rim cylinders. These are gonna be on push bars on narrow style doors or even wide style style as the things on the edge of the door. And uh, these are just as horrible. Uh, they use a little clip here that is, uh, is your, the only way to do it is to bend it out. So as in my other video, I'll put the link up here in the corner. You can use a, a, a screwdriver and just hold one side and oh, just kind of press it. Kind of press it. Now, if that's too hard to do, you can also take a retaining ring pair of pliers and just put in there like this. And... And, uh, well, let's try this this way. Ah, there we go. Spread it apart like that. So just see, it's just a bendable little clip. And when we take it off, of course, you're going to have to bend it back. One of the worst things about dealing with these is when you bend it and then you bend it back, it sometimes gets a little wonky. So you do have to put it down and kind of hammer it flat before you put it back. Because if it's really wonky on the door, the key will not come out easily or correctly so that is something you definitely have to check your key after you key it up and put your clip back on you definitely want to check your key now sometimes on certain doors i think it's the first choice i believe 1590 it's a very common push bar that come with these cylinders if you think you can easily switch it out with a regular rim cylinder you sometimes are sadly mistaken because on some of those doors and i'm going to try to find a picture and put right here of what i'm talking about but if we see these, uh, and this is actually an old ball one, but a lot of cylinders actually have slightly different holes. Now that doesn't matter on a lot of rim mount locks because you have the plate, you know, that's specific to that. However, on some of these locks, the spacing is off just enough. So if you try to switch one of these out with say a sergeant, this is the, the worst thing you have to do is if you have one of these doors with the push bar and they want sergeant, you know, on their sergeant keys, the holes for this, instead of a plate, are drilled directly into the door and countersunk. And it is very exact spacing. So if you have, if you're off just a bit, the cylinder is not gonna fit right. Long story short, the door is not gonna operate correctly with the key. So you do have to oblongate the cuts in the door and then oblongate or make it an oblong shape to reach how far off it is and again this versus sergeant rim cylinders are pretty much the worst one to do because sergeant cylinders are off uh, they're a little bit wider and they're a little bit down from this so or up from this and that throws it off just enough to make it ridiculous to try to retrofit so not an ideal thing to have to do it is possible but you're going to need some skill with a drill bit and a countersink because the heads of the screws have to be countersunk on the door for it to lay flat and for the pinion gear to work. However, a caveat, they are not split along the plug. Um, however, they're just still made out of the same cheap material. So that is it, guys. I mean, I don't know. I can't think of anything else to cover. There's not really a whole lot else to say about it besides if you're able to, talk to your client. If you have a good relationship with your client, if they buy a building and have doors put in, it's very common here, we have buildings going up all the time and this is almost always what shows up on the door so you know if it's your client and you've had a customer for years you can say hey we can use this 
or we can switch it out. I would recommend switching it out. Better security, of course, if they have their own keyway or a high security keyway, you're definitely gonna need to switch it out regardless. And I kind of did this video at the same time as my spatial ring video. I'm not quite sure which one is gonna go up first. So I'm gonna go ahead and link whichever one is, is back or forth. Spatial rings is a whole separate video because it is a whole separate topic as well. But again, if you have any questions or comments on this topic, on aluminum style, cheapy uh, cylinders, again, I love them because they're so easy to get into when I have to uh, get into a door that's a vacant you know, building or they've lost the keys and we have to get in compared to trying to get into a better quality one. However, for long-term use and for a little bit more security in a way, it is best to upgrade on to a brass cylinder, even if you use an LSDA or GMS or an LK. A lot tighter tolerances, it will last considerably longer. I would easily say five times longer as far as use, as far as how long it will last. So again, if you have any questions or comments, or if I was incorrect in anything I said, as always, leave it in the comments section. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we will catch you next video.